So how did workers react to the conditions of the Industrial Revolution? Uh, by 1815, one million workers in Great Britain um, formed a number of what are known as friendly societies. And these are really the predecessors of unions. These uh, friendly societies collected taxes from their members and gave their members insurance in case of uh, sickness, uh, death. Um, it also gave them an opportunity for a decent social life outside of, of the bleak existence of uh, factory work. There were also movements by skilled workers who had lost their jobs because machines had taken over their jobs. Uh, sometimes these uh, skilled workers organized to wreck machines and burn down factories that had taken their jobs. Um, more commonly, others acted within the confines of the law by, by joining movements that aimed at obtaining the vote for working class people. And this was a goal that was gradually achieved. Unions were legalized in Great Britain in 1824, uh, and factory workers joined associations in an effort to gain better wages, better working conditions. Unions organized strikes to, to get these better conditions. Uh, this was seen as a threat by richer people in society. In 1834, an upper-class British newspaper described unions as the most dangerous institution that were ever permitted to take root under shelter of law in any country. There are also a variety of intellectual ideas, social ideas uh, that spread that really challenged the assumption of capitalism and, and that this was the best way of life when, when so many people were suffering in the working classes. One man that I'll just mention is Robert Owen, and Robert Owen was this wealthy factory owner, uh, but he, he was different because he was actually concerned about the well-being of his workers, and he sort of took a step back and assessed the condition of industrial labor and the capitalist economic system, and he decided, came to the conclusion that this really wasn't a sustainable system. We can't keep treating workers so poorly. Robert Owen believed in creating these small industrial communities that were run by the workers, uh, create sort of what he viewed as a, a workers' utopian society. People would have uh, a lot of space to live. People lived in the same community. Uh, there were social events organized that workers could attend at night. Uh, workers would receive decent working conditions and decent wages. And Robert Owen eventually established one of these communities uh, at his mill in New Lanark in Scotland. And this community had a 10-hour workday as opposed to a 12- or 14-hour workday, uh, paid the workers a decent wage. Workers lived in relatively spacious housing. There was no child labor. Instead, there was school for children. So really a, a progressive model. Um, his communities didn't catch on uh, like he envisioned, but eventually society in general would, would move to resemble something more like what Robert Owen's vision was. Uh, much, much, much more influential than Robert Owen was Karl Marx, and Karl Marx was born in Germany, uh, but he spent most of his life in England, and he saw firsthand the brutal working conditions of Britain's Industrial Revolution and wrote extensively about history and economics. Karl Marx viewed history as the history of class conflict, and the thing that drove historical change had always been class struggle between oppressor and the oppressed, uh, whether it was between slaves and masters, serfs and lords. Um, in his own time, it was between capitalists that owned the machinery, people that benefited from the Industrial Revolution, who Marx called the bourgeoisie, and the, the workers, who Marx called the proletariat. So Marx was a, a harsh critic of capitalism, but he saw it as a good thing in a way because it would pave the way for the rise of communism, which Marx saw as being the natural progression of human societies. Uh, capitalism was the building block towards communism. And what was good about capitalism uh, and was good about the Industrial Revolution was now that humans could produce much more than ever before in history. There was enough to feed everybody and everybody could enjoy a comfortable life based on uh, the amount of things that were being produced, the, the abundance that was being produced. But the problem with capitalism uh, lay in the fact, uh, the reason capitalism he thought would fail was because capitalism failed at distributing the abundance created by the Industrial Revolution 
evenly throughout society and instead uh, capitalism concentrated the abundance in the hands of the few people who are at the top but really excluded the workers who really worked and created that abundance um, in factories and on farms in mines uh, from enjoying the fruits of the, their labor so capitalism was good because it led to the industrial revolution but ultimately it was doomed to collapse uh, in the face of revolution from working classes uh, after Marx's uh, predicted revolution he believed that the production power of industrial technology would be placed in service of the entire community. Um, so this would bring an end to that ancient conflict between rich and poor. In the later 1800s, uh, radical trade unions echoed the ideas of Marx in places like Britain and, and Germany. Uh, in Great Britain, the working class political party that ended up uh, becoming most popular was the Labour Party, and this was established in the 1890s. And the Labour Party differed from Marx. It called for a peaceful and democratic transition to socialism, uh, but it rejected the, the class struggle element and the war between social classes that Marx advocated in the Communist Manifesto. Uh, really, in, in Great Britain, the major thing that derailed communism was an improvement in the lives of workers during the second half of the 1800s, specifically the development of a large middle class. So uh, by, by the end of the 1800s, middle class was about 30% of the population, and Karl Marx never really accounted for uh, this middle class in his writing. There were bourgeoisie and proletariat, uh, but he didn't write of this middle class, and it became much bigger than than he assumed. Um, for the for the working class, wages went up under uh, the pressure from unions. The price of food fell due to due to more productive agriculture. So people weren't starving. Um, there were you began to see the emergence of these chain stores, uh, so supermarkets, stores that offered a lot of people food for uh, for a fairly cheap price, and these really catered to the working class. Um, so lives got better for working class people in Great Britain. Um, something Marx didn't uh, envision happening, and eventually working class people would obtain the right to vote, so politicians were swayed to legislate in their favor. Uh, still, all these improvements didn't completely pacify the working class or massive strikes throughout Great Britain uh, before and during the First World War. Um, but these improvements for the working class in Britain didn't destroy the idea of communism. So co communism didn't die out uh, with the death of Marx or uh, the rise of, or the better living conditions for the working class in Great Britain. And moving into the next unit, we'll see the ideas of Marx really spread beyond Britain and Germany and become much more influential in places like Russia and China, Cuba, Vietnam, and uh, even for six weeks in Winnipeg. So this is the end of episode 21, the Industrial Revolution in Great Britain.